everyone. This is Sylvia Mordini, founder of Alchemy of Yoga, and we're picking up at Reeves 5 and 6 in the Alchemy of Yoga Physical Alchemy Grounding Flow. So we left Wave 4 here in Gorilla Pose, right? And now Wave 5 just goes from there, forward fold. So let's just get proper form again here, belly to thighs, and always making sure that people know that this is more important to get the belly to the thighs than to just touch the ground. So keeping this, that contact of belly to thighs, then the legs straight, making sure not to lean back, but to get the weight balanced in the feet. Here you see me applying a technique. I'm in ridge mounts, fingertips. When we do that, we can take our elbows wide. That helps us to draw our shoulder blades together on our back, our scapula, it helps us to access those back muscles that just hanging here would not, right? So this is active forward fold. And then from here, we step back, down and facing dog. What I love about that transition is that that's a really great transition to apply in any class where not every single time does it have to be a basic vinyasa. And then knees to the ground, child's pose. Knees together or apart, but think about what might come next and where we've been and the apex pose of the practice. So right now I'm doing knees together, but if you think about, okay, we've just left wave four where it was two externally rotated legs in Vakasana and we're going to a hip opening series. So, not that together was wrong, but this feels more right, knees apart. And if the ground is too far, then head on a brick. It's more important to get our hips to our heels than to do what people think is most important, head down, but hips are not back. Otherwise, we're not feeling the stretch in our low back, our lumbar area. And then how long here? Well, this is the next to last wave of the class. They've just done their peak, top of the mountain, and we're walking down the mountain. So long standing forward fold, medium amount of time down dive, and maybe at this point they're tired, so a few breaths here in child's pose, but not too many because we still have class. And then we come up to table and we're going to be transitioning to pigeon. So look at your class plan, left knee forward. And there's going to be a couple reasons why. Open the ankle, it's wider than your shoulder. Not inside your shoulder, but wider than your shoulder. From the front knee, then the back leg widens from front to back. And this is the end of class, so the feeling is relaxation. We know that forward folds are calming, and we're moving towards Shavasana, so therefore we're not trying to excite people. We're literally trying to calm the nervous system. And we could stay at this halfway point. If this is too much tension in the hip, then we have a brick, and that lifts people up, but we're still telescoping our ribs like cobra. So front body leans forward long, back body shortens and moves backwards towards our back heel. And you can introduce amazing, wonderful pranayamas, breathing techniques in pigeon. It's a long hold. Probably the most frequent uh, misalignment in teaching this way is that new teachers just want to like go into this for a second and then go to the next one and the next one but that misses the point of we're relaxing we're relaxing we're winding down we're trying to prepare them for deeper relaxation so here one uh, beautiful technique in breathing that i love is alternate nostril breathing. So this is a variation of Nadi Shodhana, which is the traditional. We're gonna put our ring finger and our pinky finger on 
the left side of our nose. And then middle two fingers to the center of the forehead, sixth chakra, third eye. And inhale through your right foot, all the way through the right side of your body, through the right side of your nose. Close off the right side of your nose, open the left side, and breathe out and down your left hip. Close off your left. Inhale, open your right and breathe in. Exhale, breathe out the left side of your nose. This is Surya Padana. Variation, inhale right, of alternate nostril breathing. Exhale left. How many times? I would say 10 at least. Just to get the full benefit, the full calming nature. And look at the architecture. I'm breathing in the long side, that's the inhale, and my body is that same shape, it's long. And then I'm breathing out the left side and what I'm trying to accomplish is relaxing this left hip. Inhale, exhale. And then after that 10 or so times, I like to give people the option to like, after that last time, just stay up or fold even further down. And I'm crawling my arms out. I inhale, I lift up a little bit, I reach my rib cage forward and then I exhale, I come down. This is very traditional, straight forward. Back toes under so that I'm not sickling my foot and torquing my knee. This also gives access to the psoas since this is still a psoas releaser in the back leg. And I'll offer you variations. This is amazing. You could also thread your right arm under and add a little bit of a twist. You could give options to bind this and hold the left foot with the left hand if you have mixed level. If you have beginners, then no need to offer that option. It's just going to stress people out. If you've given them any sort of option, this isn't, that was not in the class plan, that was just an idea to show you, then you have them return to home base. Here we are. Now, if you look at your class plan, this is a really mindful transition, not going to a down dog. But as we walk out, we lean to the left. If they have anything under their left hip, they move it and they bring their right foot to the front plane. That's the part in front of us. It was in the back plane behind us. Right foot inside, left knee. We hold the shin to get tall and elongate the spine, front body expanding. This is where people can stay. We need the sit bones balanced even. Or right foot could go outside the left knee. Now, if people can't, if they let go, hold it without falling to one side, then that's contraindicated. They should just come back here. Otherwise, if they can be here, right, and they're using that adduction, squeezing, so be it. Right hand goes back like a second spine and unlearn this habit of falling into a flat hand. Instead, come into your ridge tips, fingertips, that again gives you access to your mid-back thoracic. Inhale, left arm up. This is just one way. Begin twisting, low back, middle back, upper back. Now, what I'm doing is I'm still using my leg muscles and my core. The tendency is to go really fast into hooking the shoulder and then just muscling it with the upper body and arm strength but getting no benefit to the hips and almost no benefit in the twist because we're just using upper body strength. 
how long? A few breaths. Now to come out, this is where the most potential for injury occurs. So be careful, they're still elongating. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, keep that length, return back to center. Now from here, let the bottoms of your feet come together as one. This is Baddha Konasana, cobbler pose. Hug your shins towards you, so that will help your heart lift up and the body moves a little bit forward. If your knees are way up high, this would be a good place to sit on a blanket or a brick so that the knees can come down low, right? And then stay upright, let people have options. If this is really hard to remain, hands could go back, still getting the hip opener, or you can give people the option to elongate, this is flat back, to come forward. Hands could walk forward, they could stay at the feet, but you can see like there's no more space for my elbows to come down on my legs. Holding my feet at first gave me some like traction to press my knees apart, but once they're all the way down, then I'm just walking forward. Cobbler. Again, longer holds. You can count their breath or you can just give them some silence or return to your theme, tying things together. Let's say we were here for a while, and then we would have them come up. Now we have side two. Side two that we've not done in pigeon. So therefore, hmm, do we have to go back to down dog or table and do all that? No. We could just take our left leg around. But I want to show you one thing. Earlier on in the practice in wave three, we gave people this training of seated pigeon. So here, in this whole pigeon experience, in wave five, if somebody is not yet available to do the floor pigeon, then you could say, go back to the previous version of pigeon, the seated pigeon. But right here, let's take our left leg back, Right knee just stays wide. It's already in pigeon because two pigeons equal a cobbler. And we just get long and then allow people to feel like there's not a hurry. There's not this like, oh God, I just have to collapse feeling. It's really mindful. And invite them to use what they need to use. Blanket or brick underneath the outer right hip. And then try to remember for a moment, which side is the solar side and which side is the lunar side? So at the end of class, why would we initiate with the left leg and then do the right leg as we are right now in second? Well, because the end, we're gonna go to Shavasana, we're gonna rest. The end is lunar, this whole wave five and six, lunar. So we initiate left to help the brain and the body feel that. Now in this technique, if you did the other, it's gonna be the complement. Right thumb to the right side of your nose, middle two fingers to the forehead. Inhale through the left side of your nose from your foot, left knee, left thigh. Close off the left, open the right, and breathe out through the right hip. Let something go that feels heavy. Close off right. Inhale, breathe in through the left. Close off left, open right, and breathe out, releasing more and more in the right hip. Close off right. Inhale, left. This is called Chandra Vedana. The first time, keep going, was Surya, Surya means sun. And then this is Chandra, C-H-A-N-D-R-A, -A, means moon. So we're doing a lunar breathing technique to 
help people get even more calm, more quiet, more restful. And again, this is mirroring the shape of the body. I'm taking the breath in through this long left side. I'm releasing out, exhaling through the right side where I'm trying to literally release tension from the hip. And let's say that was plenty. You could invite people to stay here. You could invite people to move forward. Right? And there's no reason why in the forward you couldn't add that yin experience. Put a bolster or a brick or bricks and feel some support. So classes don't have to be all one thing or the other. Or if you add the feeling of support like a yin pigeon, which is actually called sleeping swan, then so be it. Just let people really rest. If I was walking forward, I would really reach. Long, long holds here. Longer than what you think. So use your stopwatch and make sure that you're giving people way more than 30 seconds. Could you actually give people like three total minutes, at least a minute and a half in each side? And remember here, a variation is you could thread your left arm under. Pigeon can twist to both directions. But earlier on in the class, in the first wave, we did thread the needle. So this would be a nice integration of something they've done before an option to take the arm behind the back and you find your foot and that's called binding. Not necessary, this is more advanced, the bind. But the little threading could be there for anyone that wants it. And then let's say we were there for a while longer than what I've just demonstrated. Invite people to walk in easy. Bring the left leg around, right foot tucks under the left thigh, and then right knee forward. Use the delineation of the mat to help. Left foot inside the right knee. And this could be it, just right here. Yes? Or the foot could go outside. But again, if they test it and they can't maintain it, then we want to work here so that we're not torquing the spine. One more thing I did not mention on side one I want to offer is if you have a pregnant goddess, the contraindication is never to be in this hard twist. Yeah. So instead, pregnant goddesses, they twist. They can still twist, but to the open side, just more gently. And it depends what stage they are of their pregnancy as well. Or left hand behind, inhale, right arm up. Exhale, right shoulder outside, or you could cue to wrap it. And then I'll add this isometric. Reach out through your right knee and drag your left foot backwards isometrically. See if that helps you twist a little bit more deeply. Chin is parallel to the ground. Common things is chin down or chin up or just hanging. So allow people to still be really active. Inhale, look forward, lengthen. Exhale, keep the length and release the twist. Ardha Matsyandrasana. We come back to cobbler. Now listen carefully to this next cue. Please make sure that when you look behind you, there's enough space because we're gonna lie down in a moment. So just find cobbler. And now if you have glasses on and you know you wanna take them off during Shavasana, 
we're going to put them on a brick so if I walk around, I won't accidentally step on them. Or do you know you want to put your socks on right now before Shavasana? Or have them near you? Or have another layer to have near you? Then go ahead and get those things prepared to either side. Take a breath. In between side one and two, we lean forward. But this time, we're going to take our hands behind us and come down slow and lean backwards. Supta Baddha Konasana, supine cobbler pose. And again, longer times in these poses. A breathing technique that's fun to play with is having an eye pillow or a brick on the belly and teach them the three-part breath that you taught them at the beginning. Durga Pranayama, breathe into the low belly, middle lungs, upper lungs. Inhale, fill up your belly and the brick will move like it's swimming. All the way up the breath and then exhale, down from the top, middle, bottom. And then after they've been here a while, integrating the two hip openers that were abducting, pigeon pigeon together. Now we bring our knees to point to the ceiling, knees above ankles, and let's create a curve in the low back, a lumbar curve. We'll make robot arms, bringing our elbows near the body and pressing down, fingers up, palms facing in. That gives us an external rotation in our upper arms. Therefore, your chest will open up so you can breathe better. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, press down in your feet to lift your hips up. And then your hands could stay there. They could relax down, fingers reaching towards your heels. An option is to interlace your fingers without pulling your shoulders away from your ears. And so they would be here in bridge. Again, some longer holds, not just one breath, but not so long that it's like hard and we're like um, increasing the energy. And you could do bridge more than once, right? Just let people rest. And what I like to do at the end of class is I like to give the option for supported bridge. Your bricks have three heights. This is tall, medium, and low. So it's kind of nice. Like We're not trying to energize, so I recommend not going into a high. But that goes into the sacrum, medium or low. And we're getting an inversion. But it's supported. We're resting because we're so close to Shavasana. If you wanted to include an additional pose here, an easy one would be knees in and then supported shoulder stand. pause. I like to instruct constructive rest where the feet are as wide as the mat, toes in, and the knees can fall together like brackets holding a shelf. This widens the sit bones on the back of the body and lets the low back settle. Feel good. Now we have a twist. We're so close to the end of class. Jathara Parivatanasana. There's many ways to perform this twist. Feet straighten, knees could come in, feet could stay on the ground. Arms could come bent or wide, depending on space, and knees could go to one side and we'd be there a while, and then they would go to the other side and we'd be there a while. Right? Or instead of the two-need variation, 
One leg straight, which would be our right one. Left knee in. Inhale, left arm to the left for stability. And exhale, right knee over to the right for the twist. And so we twist right to left, generally, just to mimic the action of the ascending and descending pole. We'll be here a long time. Inhale, center. Exhale, release. Left leg gets long. And here, try to just let them have a practice at Shavasana. Just let them come to the middle. Cue a big breath in. And then breathe out. <sighs> but there's that tendency for people that are very vata and in stress response to immediately run to the second side. And that just shows they're not present, they're in the future. So just calming everybody down. Then energizing the legs. Right foot comes in or squeeze the knee in. Inhale, right arm again for stability. We need foundation first. And then the knee goes over to the left. Now if you want, you could put that brick underneath the knee and help the body just be supported. This is just an option for people that have uh, tightness in their low back. And these are long holds in wave five and six because you're coming around if you're in person doing adjustments or you're really offering the theming, the inspiration if you're online. So we'll be here a long time. Inhale, center. Exhale, release. Both legs walk in. Just allow yourself constructive rest. And so I just want you to notice that if we then went immediately to Shavasana, our bodies would be leaning this direction. So we're really trying to keep something in the middle before Shavasana. And here we have not just constructive rest, but supine child's pose. And it could be child's pose knees together or knees apart, and I'm just holding my shins and letting my knees go to the outsides of my rib cage. So either way, I like to cue the breath here to come back and to tie up the theme, to go around and I might deliver eye pillows, blankets, I might move things off the mat that are in their way. But what I don't do is this, and it's up to you, because I've seen this from one school of yoga, big box yoga company. Inhale, lift your head and shoulders, tighten, 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 release, Shavasana. And they do it always the same way like that. It's like, Agro, and then like drama, shavasana. And I don't know why. Um, it's like the telephone game. I have no idea where these things come from, but, but how does that make you feel on the nervous system? Or could you just be very gentle? You could stay here as many more breaths as feels really good to you right now. Releasing your low back. And just taking your time. The final pose is next, and that's Shavasana, where we're just lying down again. And so when you want to, allow your feet to come to the ground and let your low back feel easy. Both feet will walk to the outer corners of your mat. And instead of holding anything up, as you draw your shoulder blades underneath you, 
like your heart was supported on a throne. Turn your palms open and make sure that if you want to put your socks on, you put them on or if you need to put on another layer, put a blanket over you or better yet, if you want me to put a blanket over you, just raise your hand. And if you have glasses, you have that brick near you. But when we come to lie down fully, we take time. This is the most important pose of all. And we want to set it up just like we would anything else, just like a warrior or an arm balance, all the same care and attention. Palms open so your chest opens and you can breathe. But now you can stop controlling your breath, no longer breathing ujjayi breath. Let your breath fall into the background. And wherever you feel your body get heavy there first. So your heels, the backs of your thighs, the backs of your hands and elbows shoulders and your head. And if it feels like you can't get a, that perfect little spot for your head, you can just turn it just very gently side to side a little bit until it finds that sweet spot. And then raise your hand if there's anything you need right now. If you changed your mind and you wish you had an eye pillow, or wish you had a blanket over you because now that we're not moving, you're starting to feel cold. And just raise your hand and I'll come around. That's why I'm here. But otherwise now you can close your eyes and know that you are completely safe as I watch over you. your space, your time, to integrate everything that just occurred. And then lose all the attention to any detail. Here, I might connect to the theme. I might just go more quiet sooner. Just depends what I'm seeing or what I'm feeling in them. But we're here to serve them. Many years ago, I think 17, 15, something like that, a yoga studio near me, there weren't many, but there was this one about 30 miles away. The owner, who was a friend of mine, he sent an email to his staff and I happened to be on it. And he said, for December, none of us are going to play music in Shavasana. It's a busy month and people are tired and busy in their heads. We're just going to have silence in Shavasana. And so I was inspired and I told my staff the same thing. And then the expectation was in January, you could do whatever you wanted again, play music in Shavasana or not. But I personally never went back to playing music in Shavasana. And part of that is because so often in Shavasana, people have played all sorts of music and it's getting really loud. I can't relax, I'm bothered by it. Or it's too soft and, or it has words and I can't quite make them out. And so well done music might be a great aid we are, there's live music and you're playing the singing bowls, crystal bowls. Oh, beautiful. Or perhaps you're playing the gong. 
Oh my goodness, even even more delicious and sound healing. But think about all the times you've been a student that the Shavasana music didn't match the feeling. Or when the teacher talks every single second of Shavasana. So what would it be like to just let people go into the great listening? And you just hold space without having to talk. And I'll do Reiki over them, but I'll just bless them up. Or I might be doing hands-on assisting to come out is really an art. So perhaps I'll play the singing bowl or tone so it doesn't feel like so abrupt. Or if it's nothing like that, I just say, please start to deepen your breath. If your mind has felt very far away, like you went on a little mental vacation, no good. And then rub your thumb over your fingers, just that light touch to return back to your physical body. And you could bring your hands to your belly, feeling your breath, or just that touch again, like, okay, here I am. And carefully walk one leg in at a time. And now I just want you guys to ask yourself, why do we always turn to the right in, after Shavasana? Because I don't know. It seems to me, but this is just my opinion, that if we always turn to the right and never the left at the end, that by nature seems imbalanced. So sometimes I have people just, just turn to either side, whatever side is calling to you. Yeah. Or some days I might do right on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, left Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. But the left side is the lunar side. It may even have to do with time of day for me. So if it's a morning class or a noon class, going right, we're gonna start energizing. Gotta go back to work, gotta go get the kids, gotta take care of business. But if it's an evening class, you know, after work, at six, at seven, I even taught 9.15 at night, then maybe to the left, right? Now, it seems like, okay, people know how to get up, but they're in that perhaps uh, brainwave pattern, perhaps even gamma, maybe delta, where they're really relaxed. So they're relying on you to give more instruction. So press down to your right hand, look down, then your left, and then come on up. Now it's really important that you give them a direction of where they're turning. So if you were there at the front of class, but they come up and they turn like this, they're gonna be facing the wrong direction or you'll have some people facing both directions and they'll feel bad. Like they really will feel bad, they'll be embarrassed. Like, oh my God, oh my God. But when all of that could have been prevented, Please come up nice and easy. Now we're gonna be facing the original front side of the room. That's where my voice is coming from right now. And you'll just see me up front sitting, waiting for you. So happy to see your beautiful faces again. And take your time coming up. Everybody has a different schedule to come up. So just come up easy and we'll meet just sitting. And depends here if you have time to meditate. Traditionally, you meditate at the end. But I like to always give people at least a, a few moments. 
just close your eyes when you come up and let yourself just sit still and feel all that has been integrated in this integration, this yoga, this union. Even your brain feels balanced. Your thoughts are slower. And this is meditation. Now to seal our practice, please bring your hands, palms touching at your heart like we did at the beginning. And we're going to end with the sound of Om. If you're new to this practice and new to singing Om, it's just the sound your refrigerator makes when you close the door. It's also the sound of your potentiality that's not yet been made manifest place that's still aspiring to grow. It's so much. And at the end, after the OM, we're going to say a word. I'll say it to you, and I might do a little bow like this. And you're welcome to do it back to me, <laughs> only if you want to. And the word is Namaste, N-A-M-A-S-T-E. And it means thank you. And it also means that when I am in the light in me and you are in the light in you, and when we say namaste to one another, we are both in this beautiful light, seeing what's good, what's beautiful about one another. And we're celebrating. So, hands together at our heart. Inhale to Om. Om. If you don't feel confident in your Om, and you just do Om, everybody else is going to do like Om. So you have to practice Oming to build confidence and really feel like inhale to Om. Oh. From my heart to your heart to the heart of the universe. Namaste. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias mille per la macassi, succumà, don José, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. And I am going to be around after class. So if you have any questions, if you want to share anything that you're feeling or anything that's arising for you or want clarifications, I'll just be outside in front. And happy to meet you there. But so glad you're here today. I can't wait for you to come back. And then I might offer them my name again, because my name is Sylvia Mordini. My website is sylviamordini.com. And then I might tell them about an upcoming event or a situation or offering. Those of you that are new to me, while well, they're putting their things away, right? I lead a 200-hour yoga teacher training program and a 300-hour yoga teacher training program beyond that. And my next program is XYZ Date, or I have this incredible favorite workshop that's coming up. It's in less than a month. It's about Ayurveda. That's a sister science to yoga, the oldest form of medicine. And it's all about beauty from the inside out. So if that seems interesting and you want to learn more, then uh, registration is open and then I tell them how to do that, right? Like online or up front, outside. Um, and also, if you'd like to sign up for my newsletter, I send out only once a month, or it could be once a week, 
helpful tips, techniques, and tools to love yourself, love your day, and love your life. And my newsletter is called Loving Your Day. So, so if that's interesting, I have a sign up book just up here and you can just leave me your email. I also have my, my business cards here to take one if you wanna check in with me on Instagram or um, have that handy if you ever have any questions. So thank you guys, I'll be out front. And then I go around and make sure that everybody is good. I look at people's responses, anybody crying, anybody just still lying down, and what are they doing? And I go to that. What I don't do is run out of the room as the first one done with class. When teachers do that, I get super triggered because like, wow, like all of that, and then like you're the first one with your shoes on out the door. So just think about that, like add some extra time. And our job is not just to be there for students teaching class, but it's also to be there after class for a few minutes. And so you could see, like I let people know where to find me. Um, and I make myself approachable by letting them know and welcoming questions and some interaction, connection, community. Uh, that way they don't feel bad about asking something or what have you, but it, it's really important that we hold space because this is cognitive behavioral therapy and there's a lot of things that come up while we practice and they may just want to be seen and witnessed. Just not for two hours, but just that few words, that few minutes after class and you could make a real difference to people's lives. So I hope this was supremely helpful and, uh, and thank you so much, you guys. Namaste to you. <laughs> A double namaste. Peace.